Let's confess the word of God. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my day. Jesus is Lord over my nation and the nations of the world in Jesus' name. Thank God that the Holy Spirit is opening up the Word of God to me. The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword. And according to Hebrews, the new covenant is that as I hear it, and the Holy Spirit opens my ears to hear that the Holy Spirit writes this word on the tablets of my mind and my heart, and it is with me forever in Jesus' name. It does not return void, but it does accomplish in me, through me, and for me what it is sent to do. Oh, praise God for his word. I am so grateful to the Lord for giving us his word and for sending us the Holy Spirit to reveal his word to us. So now for quite a while, the, the Lord has had me ministering on and opening our eyes to the fact that through the word of God, we have an inheritance. And then, and this is, I love this scripture. 1 Corinthians 2.12 in the King James says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. And in the Amplified, he says it this way. Now, we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit, who is from God, given to us, that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. The Holy Spirit, he sent him to show us our inheritance and the things that he has freely given to us. So the first thing that we found, um, and I ministered on it yesterday, I, I do encourage you though, if you have not been listening to these to go back and just listen to um, the word on your inheritance. It has been so rich. In John um, 3.36, the word says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the way we received everlasting, and I gave this, uh, the Greek in this yesterday, but I'm going to give it to you again. That word everlasting in the Greek means perpetual, that means ongoing, eternal, forever, and everlasting. And um, in other places, this same word says eternal life. So this is something we have right now on the inside of us. So let's just take the scriptures and look at them and open our ears and our heart to receive because the word eternal life has been so used for so long. Sometimes we just kind of let it run over our mind. No, listen, this is very important to you and to the life that you're going to live from this day forward. So in 1 John 5, 11 through 15 says, And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and his life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you might know that you have, not going to have, not going to have when you go to heaven, but that you have right now eternal life and that you may believe. Now, believe is an action word on the name of the Son of God. So say this with me right now. I have right now eternal life. 
I have eternal life abiding in me. So this is what happened. In Romans chapter 5, and this is to give you an understanding of where you are, of what took place, the truth. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I'll go on with the verse and then I'll explain. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death, now remember, we're talking about that we have eternal life. So the opposite of life is death. So follow with me on this. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more, much more, I love God's word, much more, the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. So what happened was, every human being was born into sin and therefore into death. Death reigned in our mortal bodies until we made Jesus the Lord of our life. And then eternal life came into our spirit man to where life now should rule and reign in our life. So let me, let me read this. That, um, let's see, it's Romans 5, 15, I believe. It says that the offense of one, many be dead, much more by the grace of God and the gift of by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And then he says that we should reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. That we should rule, that we should reign. He's not talking about reigning like in uh, the lifespan. He's talking about reigning are just what normally humans call life. He's talking about reigning in the life of God, just like we were born into death, we've been born into life, and that now, instead of death permeating every area of our life, eternal life, the very life of God, and that is, that, that is the word Zoe, that means the very life of God. So now we should be reigning in the very life of God, that it should be permeating every area of our lives. Let me read you this other scripture. In Hebrews chapter two, verse nine, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Notice, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste, and that word taste in the Greek means experience, death for every man. So Jesus experienced death. Death in his spirit man when he became sin, and then he became death, and then his body died. Death couldn't touch him until... He was made sin. So now, look at where you are. Now you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now you have eternal life abiding in you. Now you rule and reign in life. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Like 
Jesus was righteous, so death couldn't touch him until he was made sin. But now you've been made righteous, so eternal life abides in you, lives in you. But how, how are we going to experience the reality of that? In Romans, I believe it's chapter 8, he says, it might be chapter 10, he says that, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him, what? From the dead, he's been raised to life, actually resurrection life, because it was the resurrection power of God, that he was raised to life, then uh, it says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto our total salvation, our healing, our prosperity, our eternal life. Eternal life is our inheritance. Saints, eternal life is your inheritance. And if you're not born again, but you believe with your heart, on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God and confess that He is your Lord. Then at that moment, you become born again from death unto life. You are translated at that moment from the power of Satan to the power of God. And so now we simply acknowledge what took place. And you may say, but yes, I don't feel like I have eternal life abiding in me. See, that is a lie of the devil to tell you and to make you look at your what you feel. No, once we confess, then it begins to, we begin to experience the reality of it. Confession is made unto eternal life. Since eternal life is the first thing that the Holy Spirit's shown us that we're heir of, so, and, you know, later on, after we learn all of the things, well, Paul said it's the unsearchable riches of Christ, but after we learn many of the things that we have inherited, then we will go into detail how to receive. But basically right now, with the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto what belongs to you. Pos confession brings the reality of it. So start confessing right now. I am born of God. I have eternal life. Well, how do you know you have it? Because God said so. Only because God said so. You know, if somebody uh, told you that you had inherited um, and, and you knew that person, say they said um, you... You've, you have this relative that passed away and they left you an inheritance and this is your inheritance, you would believe it. Well, how much more should we believe the word of the living God who cannot lie? So say this, I have eternal life abiding in me. And saints, I'm going to tell you, it will affect your mind, your skin, your eyes, your body, it will affect every part of your being. So start acknowledging one of the first things that the Holy Spirit has shown us that belongs to us. And we'll look at this some more tomorrow. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. You have eternal life abiding in you right now.